now on Denver 7 News, another week at home for the Broncos taking on the 49ers here at Empower Field. This is where big boy football comes to play, you know what I mean? You just got to be able to match the intensity. But criticism over the team's performance has head coach Nate Hackett making some big changes before week three. I need to do better at making decisions faster and quicker and getting that information to the quarterback. It's got to improve. We'll introduce you to the new staff member helping Broncos country ride smooth on game day. So many receivers and so many TVs, there's always room for another game. Plus, the Broncos, Avs, and Rockies all sharing a game day in Denver tomorrow. How local businesses are taking advantage of the opportunity. Good evening and thanks for watching this post game edition of Denver 7 News. I'm Bayon Wang and I'm Amy Wattis. We are less than 24 hours until kickoff for the Broncos taking on the 49ers here at home. Let's get right over to Denver 7 sports anchor Nick Rothschild. Nick, look, the Broncos really need to iron out their game day operations, but they may have found the man to do just that. Yeah, you guys this week in Broncos country has been so dramatic. Honestly, these storylines fit Bravo better than ESPN. The driving force behind the drama, Nate Hackett's rampant poor decision making in the first two games of his head coaching career, which he did address this week. Uh, I need to do better at making decisions faster and quicker and getting that information to the quarterback and being on the same page with him. So that's stuff that we're talking about uh, this morning all the way to this evening and making sure that it's, it's, it's got to improve. Coach Hackett turned discussion into action today, hiring notorious NFL assistant coach Jerry Rosberg to help with this game day operations dilemma. Rosberg worked with John Harbaugh and the Ravens as recently as 2018, so he knows his stuff, which is going to be important because Real Housewives of Broncos country gives way to smash mouth football come Sunday night. The 49ers are a no frills kind of bunch, and Bradley Chubb says to win in this sort of environment, you're going to need to bring both your hard hat and your lunch pail. Look at it as a challenge when it comes down to those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Uh, understand that this is where big boy football comes to play. You know what I mean? They, they like to run the ball. Um, as a front seven, we got to make sure we're stout in the run and uh, so we can get to those pass opportunities and stuff like that. But for the most part, man, we just got to do our thing. We know what they present, what they bring, and we just got to be able to match the intensity. To college football and another tough day for Colorado State. Already down to Sacramento State, 14 to three, starting quarterback Clay Millen dropped awkwardly in the backfield. Comes up clearly in pain, looks like it could be a throwing shoulder injury. Hard to tell, but Millen would leave the game and not return. That brings in true freshman Braden Fowler Nicolosi, who despite having very little time to throw, finds Torrey Horton for the 52 yard touchdown strike. But that's all I've got for Rams highlights. Jay Norvell's Tenure up north starts 0-4, final score 41-10. Buffalo is also turning to a true freshman at quarterback today, 19-year-old Owen McCown, son of legendary NFL backup Josh McCown. And look, it wasn't a great result. The Buffs got blown out again, but for the first time this year, I can say Colorado has a quarterback who really looks the part. He wasn't totally incompetent. That's all we're asking for. McCown rushed for a touchdown, threw another one late to Jordan Tyson. But the Buffs fall to 0-4 as well, 45-17 final score there. So another weekend, another pair of uh, just not so much fun football games for our two largest college programs. And if you're looking at me for answers, I got none. Maybe we start rooting for the novelty of watching two Division I programs run the table and lose every game? I don't know. I'm open to ideas. Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? You're just going to stay on me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no ideas uh, from us over here. But Yeah, I'm kind of drawing a blank, so mm. Mayan, you can sit and think about it for a little bit. Bueller. <laughs> well, it is not just the Broncos playing tomorrow. The Avs and the Rockies are too. It's that sweet spot in the Colorado professional sports season when all three hold ga games at the same time. Very exciting. Denver Sounds Colette Bordelon explains how businesses in downtown Denver are getting ready. What are we doing down here, guys? Fall is in the air at Society Sports and Spirits. That's what makes my world go round. That's what puts bread and butter on the table for all of us. A bar where it feels like the holidays are already here. It's the best time of year. <laughs> <laughs> and manager Chantel Buck has a present headed her way. The Avalanche's first preseason game tomorrow. Gearing up for a busy season where all their screens will be needed. We actually do all of our hiring in August right before football season to get ready for football, abs, the whole shebang. This is our time to shine. Sunday, the Rockies play at Coors Field just after one in the afternoon before the Broncos fill up in Power Field at Mile High for kickoff at 620. Then the Avs first preseason game at Ball Arena at seven. 
got to see our boys uh, get ready for next season. With Avs fans starting early and young. He's already been to two games. Still seeing that Stanley Cup. One of the happiest moments of the summer for sure. It's just Broncos country. While Broncos fans. So it's been six years. Six years, guys. It's, it's time to turn it around. Have high expectations for their team. Russell Wilson, that's another coach you have on the field. Maybe let him do what Manning used to do here, right? Improvise, call a play, bring his experience in. Questions about the seasons that fill up bars with an energy you can feel. Strangers come together, so it's really nice to share that with other people that you don't know. We're the more, the merrier. We have so many receivers and so many TVs, there's always room for another game. And where Denver teams will dominate a Sunday that might feel more like a holiday. Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. Denver police are prepared for all of the games tomorrow, and they are asking you to take some basic precautions as well. Plan ahead for a safe, sober ride to and from the stadiums or wherever you will be watching the games from. You can also use RTD to get around with around town or carpool with friends to minimize the amount of cars on the road. Police also suggest getting where you need to be early as heavier traffic is expected in the downtown corridor. Yeah, you certainly don't want to be late to those games. And while sports will help drive traffic to these businesses, downtown Denver is still struggling to keep many stores around as pre-pandemic shopping levels still haven't returned to normal. Denver 7's Rob Harris is in downtown Denver tonight with the new program, hoping to give new businesses a big break. The program's called Pop Up Denver. It's run by the Downtown Denver Partnership, and the offer is pretty straightforward. Essentially, any small business that's willing to occupy a currently empty storefront on 16th Street Mall can get at least three months of free rent, plus a stipend for their marketing and design costs if they're selected. Five businesses were chosen for Phase 1, and now 10 more will be chosen for Phase 2. I talked to two very impressive entrepreneurs who were this close with Phase 1, and now they're hoping Phase 2 is their lucky shot. It looks delicious. They've already got their jingle. Sister, sisters, we got the codes. Whenever you eat them, you've got so. And they're already selling boxes and boxes of their delicious treats online. People like order like a hundred. But 11 year old Charlize and 13 year old Zaire Hawkins have their sights set on downtown Denver. And they're not going to stop until they have a storefront to call their own. We want it to be colorful so a lot of people can see. There'd be like little kids seeing like, oh my gosh, mom, can we come back here? Because like it would, pro it would probably make them really happy to see other children doing their own thing. The Hawkins sisters applied for the first round of Denver pop-up business grants earlier this year. And they were among the top finalists. And now the phase two of the program has been announced. So you guys planning to try again? Yes. It's a lot of work, creating their dream business from the ground up while still getting all their schoolwork done. How many eggs did you put in? But they have a vision, not only for themselves, but for Denver. There's a lack of diversity in Colorado and we want to make a change and there's a lot of room for us to do that. We're little black kids and most little black kids don't really have their own business. We want to just inspire people to be their own CEO just like us and we can make a difference. The Hawkins sisters and others who are interested are already working on their business pitches because the Downtown Denver Partnership plans to accept applications for Phase 2 starting in February. For Denver 7, I'm Rob Harris. Rob, thank you so much. Every kid that wants to play a sport should have that opportunity no matter what. That's why the nonprofit, A Precious Child, holds the annual Give Sports Equipment Drive at Ball Arena. This is their 11th year, and they're partnering with Kroenke Sports Charities. Former Avs players Rick Barry has been a part of the drive since it started and says the impact has been massive. Anybody who has a kid knows how expensive any kind of activity is, so just the littlest thing helps wherever, whatever it may be, whether it's new cleats or new glove or whatever it is. But, you know, some of these kids get a whole outfit, and that, that's a big deal for instead of a family having to go out and drop a couple hundred bucks that they don't have. A precious child has also teamed up with the Broncos and other pro teams for Give Sports Camps. We'll take you inside the camp with Broncos players Dalton Reisner and Justin Simmons and show how your donations are helping make it possible. Look for that story here Monday night after the uh, Cowboys and Giants game. Aurora police shot and killed a man who they say threatened officers with a gun. This happened around 3.30 this afternoon near Alameda and Havana. 
Officers were pursuing a stolen car there with three people inside. When they finally made contact with the group, police say one of the suspects ran across Alameda and pulled out a gun. Two of the officers shot the man who was taken to the hospital with serious injuries where he later died. One of the other suspects inside the car was taken into custody. Aurora police arrested this man on your screen for allegedly carrying a gun inside the Children's Hospital. Police say Jeremy Tate was taken into custody just after midnight after he entered the building through an employee entrance. He was found to have six outstanding warrants, including three felonies. Tate is also charged with possession of a weapon by a previous offender, possession of an illegal weapon, and possession of a large capacity magazine. Well, coming up, fall is finally here, and that means it is time to start thinking about those holiday travel plans. That's right. We'll show you the best time to book your Thanksgiving and Christmas flights next.